ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानंजन When the cowherd men of Vrindavan under instruction of Krishna stopped offering sacrifice to the heavenly king Indra the whole tract of land known as Braja was threatened with being washed away by constant heavy rains for 7 days Lord Krishna out of his causeless mercy upon the inhabitants of Braja held up the hill known as Govardhan with one hand only although he was only 7 years old he did this to protect the animals from the onslaught of water report children play with an umbrella generally known as a fog's umbrella or in ordinary english mushroom i wonder why a fog would want an umbrella they like water is that in sanskrit it said like that bangla ki bole bangla chapta bangla chapta that's why fog fog is put that fog that's that's it That would be a pretty, well, it had to be a big mushroom and a small frog. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The frog, they like the rain, isn't it? That's why Bangladesh is called Bangladesh, because there's so many bangs. <laughs> Bang means frog in Bengali. Oh, better not say that. They might get upset. They might start a new... Joy, joy Bangla movement. Children play with an umbrella generally known as a frog's umbrella and Lord Krishna when he was only seven years old could snatch the great hill known as the Govardhan Parvat at Vrindavan and hold it for seven days continuously with one hand just to protect the animals and the inhabitants of Vrindavan from the wrath of Indra, the heavenly king who had been denied sacrificial offerings by the inhabitants of Rajabhumi. Actually there is no need of offering sacrifices to the demigods for their services if one is engaged in the service of the supreme lord sacrifices recommended in the vedic literature for satisfaction of the demigods are a sort of inducement to the sacrifices to realize the existence of higher authorities the demigods are engaged by the lord as controlling deities of material affairs and according to the bhagavad gita when a demigod is worshiped the process is accepted as the indirect method for worshiping the supreme lord but when the supreme lord is worshiped directly there is no need of worshiping the demigods or offering them sacrifices as recommended in particular circumstances lord krishna therefore advised the inhabitants of raja bhumi not to offer any sacrifices to the heavenly king indra but indra not knowing lord krishna in raja bhumi was angry at the inhabitants of raja bhumi and tried to avenge the offense he considered it an offense but confident as the lord was he saved the inhabitants and animals of raja bhumi by his personal energy and proved definitely that anyone directly engaged as a devotee of the supreme lord need not satisfy any other demigods however great even to the level of brahma or shiva Thus this incident definitely proved without a doubt that Lord Krishna is the personality of Godhead and that he was so in all circumstances as a child on the lap of his mother as a boy 7 years old and as an old man of 125 years of age in either case he was never on the level of the ordinary man and even in his advanced age he appeared a young boy 16 years old these are the particular features of the transcendental body of the lord So going back to yesterday's class who is Maya Sunu the son of Maya Vyoma Sura Yeah I said yesterday actually I wasn't sure So I won the quiz I am the greatest That's what Indra thought He thought that Krishna had offended him by telling the Vrajvasis not to worship him indra so that would appear to be an offense if a junior disregards a senior that is an offense 
and Indra appear to be senior to Krishna. Because Krishna is just a cowboy boy. And Indra is the king of heaven. But Indra didn't realize that Indra is Indra because Krishna is Krishna and not vice versa. Indra is the king of heaven because Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. And he's given him that position. But Indra just saw him as a small boy. And Nanda Maharaj also saw Krishna as a small boy, but their attitude was different. Indra wanted to lord it over Krishna and Nanda Maharaj, although also in a superior position to Krishna, socially it appeared like that, his attitude to Krishna was one of pure love. And therefore Nanda Maharaj is Nanda Maharaj and Indra is Indra. Indra is just the king of heaven, some insignificant position. And Nanda Maharaj is Although Indra wanted to be worshipped, Nanda Maharaj doesn't want to be worshipped, but those who are most expert in theological science, they worship Nanda Maharaj. Jahameha Nanda Vande, Nanda Vande, Yasyalinde Parambrama, Shutimitare, Svitimapare, Bharata Manye, Ya Bhavabhaya Bhitam. This is the beginning of that verse. So Nanda Maharaj doesn't want to be worshipped and it seems that Krishna, he also, he's not much concerned with being worshipped, although he is worshipped in his Narayan form. And he's worshipped as Krishna also. But in Vrind he comes to Vrindavan specifically not to be worshipped. Krishna in Vrindavan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He doesn't stop being so. Whatever Indra thinks. But He's not in Vrindavan, he's not come to Vrindavan, he doesn't, in Vrindavan he's not in his mode of accepting worship. In fact, when he comes home, in the evening, with all the cows and cowherd boys and all the inhabitants of Vrindavan who don't go with him, they are waiting for Krishna and Balaram and all the cowherd boys on the road. And the demigods are also waiting there and offering prayers, Brahma with four heads, Rudra with five heads. And the cowherd boys seeing this, they start to mimic, they go up to Krishna and in jest, they start offering prayers, Oh Krishna, you are so great, it's just a big joke for them. So it's a different mood and Indra can't understand. Someone wrote, recently about this uh, what does it mean that Lakshmi Priya she was the, the separation from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the form of a snake and she died from snake birth or she, so what does that mean so I tried to give some explanation said, I can't understand and I said don't worry Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva also don't understand so if you don't understand it's not surprising this is Avicintya tat pantas tu koti shata vatsara sampragamyo vayora tapi manasomune pungavana so piasti yakrava de simya vincintya tatve govindamadi purusham tamaham vajami. No material method, even that of the mystic yogis, who by mystic yoga practice they can. They can enter into the material elements, they can enter into fire and not be damaged, they can take a rock from the moon without going on a space mission or a pomegranate from Kabul if there are any left after it's all been bombed to pieces. Prabhupada said that his, in his childhood the one yogi came to their home and he said, what would you like to eat? He said, I'd like some fresh Kabuli dalim, some pomegranate directly from Kabul. So they said, okay, go in the next room. And they saw a fresh, first class, from just taken from the tree. So the yogi can do, they can do so many things. They can walk on the water. I was seeing a video in which someone was, TV show from England, they showed me that someone was doubting, do you really believe that Jesus walked on the water? What's, what's the big thing, walking on the water? So many, 
So many yogis in India walk on, walk on what is, and not even yogis, just ordinary people, they go, they go right through the fire, the Thai person, it's an ordinary thing. You see them on the street and the buses are going past and life just goes on as normal while people are walking on hot coals and dragging chariots with the hook in their back and no drop of blood. And so the yogis, they have tremendous mystic potency. It seems tremendous to us, but they... There are limits to that, but Krishna is beyond that limit. He is avichintita, beyond the power even of the greatest thinkers to comprehend. Especially Krishna's Vrindavan Leela. Krishna's Vrindavan Leela is most difficult to understand. It's not Actually, it's not possible to understand. It's not even meant to be understood in, in the normal sense of the term understand. When we think understand, we think that we put one fact in our brain, put another fact in the brain and try to link them up. But the very essence of Vrindavan Lila is it's that it is chamatka. It is amazing that Dhanu Maharaj has kindly translated Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, in which there's analysis of rasa. And this is especially the, in, in terms of the world of theology, this world, this side of the Viraja River, and actually even the other side, <laughs> the Gorya, the, the specific contribution of the Gorya Sampada, even to Vaishnavism, is its Rasa Vichar, or understanding analysis of Rasa, transcendental Rasa. And that Rasa, that, that is gen generated from a sense of wonder. This, that is always something wonderful, ah, and always new. So that's the nature of Vrindavan. Everything is wonderful in Vaikuntha, everything is wonderful also, but it's predictably wonderful. Narayan is there, Lakshmi is there, everything is ordered, everything goes on very nicely. There are no terrorists, no strikes, no poverty, no Daridra Narayan. Everything is peaceful, very nice. Everything's under control. But in Vrindavan you never know what's going to happen next. The only thing you can be sure of is it's something that you cannot imagine because Krishna's pastimes are like that. They are a hairy hmm? What is that? A hairy a hairy hub. Prema. What is that? I can't remember. The prema. It's like the movement of a snake. It doesn't go straight. It's like this. I saw a snake up here. You get lots of snakes around here, I suppose. Hmm? Dangerous? They're just frog snakes. They, they try to catch a frog, is it? Not very dangerous. Big, but not dangerous. For us. Dangerous Dangerous for the frogs. Rattlesnake. That You don't get there here, though. That's in America, no? <laughs> they don't come in this muddy place. They're in the dry desert, the rattlesnake. Yeah. So the... Uh, a hair eva premnagati. The prima, you can't predict. It's going like that, crooked. The movement is not straight. So Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan even more so than in Mathura or Dwarka, they are something wonderful. Always something wonderful. Something adbhuta. Adbhutaras. The under, with, in all the rasas there is adbhut. That, that makes it rasa. That it's something wonderful. Or something 
unpredictable. Yesterday, Shamchandra Prabhu was asking me that he had heard that Kusum Sarova, you all know Kusum Sarova, right? It's famous with the big palace. And he'd heard that it's 65 miles deep. And he asked me, is it true? Well, actually, it's much deeper than 65 miles. It's much deeper than any number of miles. It's much deeper than any of us can understand. The, the pastimes that take place there are beyond human intelligence to measure. How deep are the kuns of Vrindavan? Well, you can say this one is ten feet deep or this one is twenty feet deep, but actually they are immeasurable. From the terrestrial vision, we can say this one is ten feet deep, this one is twenty feet deep. Kusum Sarovar, as we see it now, I don't think it's sixty, I mean in terms of measurement, I don't think it, I never heard that it's sixty-five miles deep. It was, it was excavated fairly recently. Earlier, in the last hundred years, it was, Kusum Sarovar is eternally there, but as we see it now, it's that science. There are, at Naimisharanya, there's the Chakra Tirtha, which is said to be immeasurably deep. It goes right down to the next level, or Varsha, or whatever you want to call it. So, apparently, during the British rule, some Britisher wanted to disprove this, so he got some chain, he got some long chains, and he put, Chakra Tirtha is like a big round well, that's how we see it. So he put it down one mile, then he gave up. He didn't want to go any deeper. So it's at least one mile deep by by the British scientific method. Nowadays you can, they, they have these something scopes. What's that called? Bathoscope. They go they go, they've gone very deep into the sea, like 20 miles or something. So they go 20 miles deep into the sea, that's, that's pretty deep. So maybe they could try one of them now. But there's no point anyway, because what we see and what we measure, that is not the way... The actual depth is something that we cannot see or understand. When we see, we go to Vrindavan, we see buses, and we're doing Govardhan Parikrama, and there's, there's Ayurvedic medicine shop, and they're blasting out on the speaker 24 hours, and selling balm because people get sore legs, so they think they can get a good business from selling balm. Then we see beggars and pandas and all oh, it's according to our vision it's a busy, dusty, a lot of the year hot, commercialized pilgrimage come tourism. But that's not the Vrindavan that's being described here in Srimad Bhagavatam. Everything about Vrindavan is inconceivable. Even one grain of dust in Vrindavan, that's more precious than everything Indra's got. Indra's so proud of being Indra. But he, he wanted to destroy Rajabhumi, but he doesn't understand that one grain of dust from there is more valuable. Not valuable in, in terms of gold. You can go and bring the gold to the stock exchange and say, give me gold. I won't give you any gold for that. They won't even allow you in. They have, in the jewelry shops, they have the, the guards with the big guns, which look completely useless. They have these old guns. 
if anyone came with any modern guns, they'd be completely useless. But they won't, they won't let you in. So that people are interested in gold, but the dust of Vrindavan, that is inconceivable, that has the good fortune of what is that? Radha Padmanketa Dham Jar Nam Vrindavan. Bhakti Rav Thakur says that the definition of Vrindavan is that land which is with the impression of the lotus feet of who? Generally we think of Krishna, isn't it? But Bhakti Rav Thakur says of Radha. Radha Padmanketa Dham. So that dust that is more valuable than all the treasures of the world, but one has to be hmm, eligible to appreciate that. Vishoy charya kabe shuddha habe ma, tabe hama haribo shri vrindavan. When one is free from the desire for material enjoyment, then one can see Vrindavan. And everything there is wonderful. We hear so many stories. In the Bible they have this, Jesus walked on the water and they're amazed by that. And they say, how can that be true? But then we have Krishna, he, he entered the water and went down to the, the planet of Varuna, we were just reading yesterday. And then Krishna from Dwarka, he goes through all the coverings of the universe to the Mahavishnu Loka. But not, not really Loka, or the ego. Krishna holds the big hill as a little boy, seven years old. Holds the big hill on the tip of his little finger for seven days. And then immediately got that all evaporated by Dwadasha Aditya, twelve sons, came to evaporate all that water very quickly. So everything we hear about, in the next verse we'll be reading on two verses after that, about all the demons that were killed. Pralamba, Kara, these are killed by Balaram. Pralamba Sura, Kara means Denakasura. Bakasura, Keshi demon. So all these demons, they take different forms. Keshi comes as a horse to Vrindavan. He's not always like a horse, but he, he assumes that form. So if people have difficulty accepting that Jesus walked on the water, then how are they, which is, you know, it's just a normal thing that yogis do. There's, what is that, one of the, was it one of the alvas or one of the acharyas in the Ramanuja Sampradaya that he was, the boatman refused to take him across the Kaveri, so he said, oh, okay, and he just walked over. <laughs> so these are so many wonderful things. If we, if we go around Vrindavan, Vrindavan Parikrama, we'll hear so many wonderful things. This is the place where Krishna killed the Keshi demon. This is, and this is the place where Krishna swallowed the forest fire. And not only in the time of Krishna, but even recently we hear so many sadhus, they go to Vrindavan and so many wonderful things. Bilva Mangal Thakur was playing with Krishna. Prabhupada, one time there, there was some in Siddha Prabhupada, he was, after going to America and coming back, one of his disciples heard from some of the local bridge basis, Radha Dhamma that Prabhupada used to speak with Rupa Goswami at night. So he asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, did you speak with Rupa Goswami at night? Sometimes when you used to in front of all? Everyone knows that. So, so many wonderful things. This uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, 
the story is told how there was the rivalry going on between the Swakiyavadis and Parakiyavadis, those who say that, well, Krishna married Radharani and the gopis, and those who contested that. So Vishwanath Chakravar Thakur, he was championing the Parakya Vad camp, and the pundits of the Swakya Vad, they were being defeated by him, so they decided to kill him. That's one way of winning an argument, I suppose. That's what it's presumed. There's a lot of killing in religious history. So, it's going on even today. <clears throat> so, the, every morning he used to, as every sadhu or every, every person used to do in India, rise early in the morning and go for his bath and then go and do his, collect flowers, do puja, all these things. So, they were waiting for him and they saw him coming along the path and then he entered into one grove and then they went there to get him. And they, didn't, they didn't see him. They saw there's just some beautiful young girl Kale, uh, who's, who looked so bright and shining that uh, just seeing her, their minds became pacified. They went there to kill now we're going to kill him. And this one, when they saw him, they became very peaceful. They said, oh, did you see there was one sadhu who came here? He said, no, I didn't see any sadhu. And who are you anyway? He said, I'm maidservant of Radharani. She sent me here for collecting some flowers to use for offering to Krishna. And then the form of the girl transformed into Vishuddhat Chakravar Thakur, who is... Gopi. So then they really, then they offered the and says, "Okay, all right, you won the argument. We accept." So there are so many wonderful things. Vrindavan means the land of where wonderful is normal, and that's the spirit. That's the nature of the spiritual world. The, the wonderful. Chamatkara, or that which is wonderful, that's normal. That's what I'm saying, the Kusum Sarovar. How deep is it? 65 miles? No, much deeper. If you measure it, maybe, I don't know. It's pretty deep. Bhavananda used to make all the, they used to go on Parikramari. They used to make everyone jump off that high, that high tower. It's pretty high. So, but no one smashed their head on the bottom. It's very deep. Very deep water. How deep? Probably not 65 miles, but then much deeper. Because every drop of water of Kusum Sarovar is fully transcendental and spiritual. And you can analyze it. You can take it to a laboratory and analyze it. It's got this algae in it and this, this mineral composition. But it's not measurable by any material means because it is the water which is serving the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So wonderful is normal, but that that's one that it's something wonderful all the time doesn't make it boring. It's always it's always ever fresh. There are always amazing things going on. And in Krishna consciousness it's like that. There are so many wonderful things. I mean, it's not just in Vrindavan. So many temples here also. The ancient temples and so many stories are there. There's not, not even only the uh, Vishnu temples and the demigod temples also. There are so many amazing happenings. And those who have faith, they believe. It. And those who don't, they won't. They won't. They'll deny it. I want to speak of these. We, we call these things wonderful because it seems unusual to us. Because we don't expect such things to happen. But everything around us is wonderful. These, these kind of amazing happenings, they give faith to people. That's 
Sometimes some yogis, they, or so-called yogis, they fake their magic tricks. There's one Baba next door in Bangalore who is widely reputed to fake his magic tricks. And some of them, they may have some mystic powers. And they're trying to convert so many people to Christianity by miracle healing. They, they heal people. They say, believe in Jesus. And someone who's been in a wheelchair for 20 years gets up and walks and says, Hallelujah. And this, this proves that to them that the power of Jesus, of course, they have to die eventually. So more intelligent is to think how to get free from death than getting free of a wheelchair. But these kind of things, they, these kind of mystical happenings, they give people faith. And even there, there are places where people go specifically to get some miracle performed. And there, are, there are many temples where, where people go specifically, they're not getting children, and they go there, and if you pray there, you're supposed to get children. Nowadays they don't want children anyway, so... Uh, it's called Visa Ganesh. You remove Visa Ganesh. You get your visa for America. There you go. Out so just at the edge of Hyderabad, there's one temple. It's a Balaji temple, and that's famous. Whatever you want, you get it. In, when you said visas, I remember that because that's a, that's one of the things people go for. In France, there's a place called Lourdes, which it's a small village, but it's pop, it's very busy because people when there's some apparently the Virgin Mary is was seen there, and whoever goes there gets cured from all kinds of diseases. And there are even regular flights from. Dublin, the capital of Ireland, to this remote village in France called Lourdes, because so many people go there to get cured from. So presumably something's happening. They must be getting something. I mean, you couldn't fake it. It's been going on for 200 years or something at Lourdes. <laughs> there, there are many cases of miracle cures. Yeah. Ganesh drinking milk, yeah. But the, that day, we heard about, I was in Delhi and Lokanath Maharaj was there. He said, okay, let's try it. So they, in the deity room, they brought one Gopal deity. And he said, and I did it too. You, I, I'm turning my hand, but you don't have to do it. You just put the milk at the lip and just slowly, slowly, you visibly, the, way, the milk went. No, but this was a this metal thing. Too. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So anyway, the point is there are so many wonderful things, and these things give people faith. So many stories. So. So many stories. You should go for your eyes. Huh? The, the, there's a story that he lost. The, the, the devotee was becoming blind and she asked for her eyes back. He said, you give my eyes back. Because they removed, they changed his eyes. <laughs> That's not a bona fide process. You can change the clothes of the deities, but not change the eyes. At Radha Balab in Melbourne, they asked Prabhupada, can we put on these eyes? And they, at the time of installation, Prabhupada said, either you put them or you don't put them, but you don't change afterwards. It's not, you, not that you have a different set of eyes every day. So, so, yeah, there are so many things. When Pankajangri Prabhu comes, he goes and he comes and tells the story. So many stories of Rishimadeva personally appearing to the Pujari and then to someone, someone at Chaitanya Mat. He told, he came in the, he came to them and then the, his guru told him, okay, you better go and worship him. And, and Jagannath, that uh, 
Rajapura, Rajpura. Is it Rajapura or Rajpura? Rajapur, yeah, Rajpur is in Punjab. So there's so many stories of him, and the Muslims also have faith in him, which is against their religion because they know that, that we don't like Hindus, but we have to be careful with Jagannath because if he's pleased with you, very good. If he's not, you're in trouble. So these things they create faith, but actually, one who has got the eyes to see then. Anyway, we should have faith in the Lord. The, the, the miracles are required for people who, who uh, they're less intelligent, actually. If you require some mystic apparition, but everything we see should remind us of the Supreme Lord. That Maya Dhakshena Prakriti Suyate Sacharaja Mahitunani Nakonte Jagadvi Parivartate. The whole world, how is it going on? Only by his power. That the tree comes from the seed, that's a, isn't that amazing? But we, because we, it's part of our normal experience, we think it's normal. That's why for a, for a transcendentalist, the, the, what other people think is something amazing, it's just normal. You see, it's just like Prabhupada said that when they asked him, Prabhupada, did you sometimes used to speak in Rupa Goswami? No, 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 everyone knows that. <laughs> for him it was normal. For us we think, wow, oh, oh, that's amazing. And then that time they asked Prabhupada, the Prabhupada, do you sometimes go and see the demigod? He said, why? Why should I go and see the demigod? They come and see me. <laughs> so, so, one thing is that the, it might be difficult to sort out the, the real stories of these amazing happenings because many times people, they fake it or they make it up or they advertise it, or exaggerate, something small happens and they make it big. So, Prabhupada, he wasn't... He told some stories about himself, how his own Guru Maharaj came in his dream several times and told him, you must come with me. He said, come with me. Yeah. Come with me, which means he mean, mean take sannyas. So that several times told. And then Prabhupada told he had the heart attack on the boat, and then when he was going in the ship over the sea, and he told that Krishna in his various forms, the Das Avatar, appeared to him in the dream and said, Don't worry, I'm rowing the boat. So he was rowing the boat and said, Don't worry, I'm looking after you. And Prabhupada told that it, when he, Prabhupada was with Krishna and Krishna told him, you come to this world and uh, he told Pr Prabhupada, you come and preach. And Prabhupada said, oh, how, how can I go there? It's so miserable. Prabhupada, and then Krishna said to him, you don't worry, I'll look after everything. You just go there and write those books. As Bhavananda told us so when he was in quarantine with Prabhupada. So many. The, the unusual is normal. But we shouldn't advertise that this happened, this happened to me, that happened. Prabhupada told that someone, someone had told that he was doing parikrama of Jagannath in Puri in the temple and with his wife and Jagannath snatched his wife's sari. Prabhupada said, well, how do you, do we have to believe this? That, that fat, black, ugly woman, the Jagannath is snatching her side. <laughs> Prabhupada said, and as far as I'm he said, nothing. He said, I know nothing that happened like this to me. I don't have any stories to tell like this. Although actually he did. But he said, as far as I'm concerned, I simply have full faith in the words of my spiritual master. That's all. Not all these different stories and amazing happenings and that's not the substance of our Krishna consciousness. Actually, the substance means there's the Krishna Leela, but not that we're going around saying, well, this happened to me, uh, Krishna appeared to me, I had this apparition. There's, there's so many stories like that, but that's, that's not the basis of our understanding of Krishna consciousness. The basis is Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam, 
the knowledge of Krishna given in Shastra. Knowledge has to be received from Guru Sadhana and Shastra. As far as mystic apparitions and so that may be there, but the real test is Bishoy Charya Kobe Shuddha Hobema. That we if we're free from the desire for personal enjoyment, then our link with Krishna will be substantial. Otherwise so many people tell they have this dream and this apparition and but then you see what they're doing in their life. They're, si- they're sitting there or drinking a cup of tea and telling you that Krishna comes to them in their dreams. But what's the meaning? What's the value? The Krishna is going to come on what? You're going to share a cup of coffee with him? Not very likely. So these things are there and those things which are told by genuine accepted acharyas we can accept as genuine spiritual experiences and there are certainly many such incidences because the nature of the spiritual is that it's it's not bound by material law so definitely such apparitions and incidences do happen all the time but those who are on that platform, they don't even take it as wonderful. For them, it's, it's normal, and they don't, they don't have to advertise it to others. This happened, that happened, this apparition, this, that, the other. Rather, they, they, uh, they don't advertise that because they don't want to... Unlike the materialistic people who like to create an impression to others of, of being advanced spiritualists according to all their magic powers and their wonderful apparitions. The uh, a devotee, he doesn't like to advertise. Like Madhavendra Puri, he, Krishna appeared to him in dreams and gave orders, but he didn't advertise it, but only because he had to execute some service to the Lord that these things became known. So, taking to Krishna consciousness means to enter the platform of the amazing, the platform of the wonderful. But that is not a matter of advertising to others, to promote one's own greatness. Rather, uh, a great devotee always tries to promote how wonderful is Krishna. And certainly Krishna is wonderful. So if we promote that, that is the meaning of Krishna consciousness. That is kirtan, to glorify Krishna. But if we want to glorify ourselves, then, oh well, this, I saw Krishna in an apparition, and Krishna dragged, grabbed my sari, and this is just another form of self-promotion. So that should not be there. On the other hand, if one is genuinely trying to serve Krishna, then we'll see the hand of Krishna in everything. And when we try to do something wonderful for Krishna, then certainly Krishna will reciprocate in wonderful ways. And we can see how Krishna is helping us. How Prabhupada spread this Krishna conscious movement all over the world. Was certain, certainly Krishna's hand was there. Shama Sunda Prabhu, one of Prabhupada's first disciples on the west coast he, t- he told that he just gave one, one incident that we could always we were just we had no money we were just a few people and we had this idea we're going to take over the world for Krishna we we had full confidence and we saw how Krishna was helping us at all times that we, we one time they organized a big festival and they had no money and they made all the arrangements and they had to pay so many hundreds of dollars, which in those days was a lot of money for them. And they had no idea where the money was going to come from. And then, just early morning, they, they went outside, there was no one around, and they saw so many hundred dollar notes just blowing in the street. So they just picked them up and, and used it. Again, it is much later, it must have been, I think, about 1976, in, in New York City, they were doing the book distribution marathon, and they were handing out. Every devotee was handing out hundreds of books every day. Just ask, give, give whatever, any donation, whatever. 
And they were just giving out so many books and their BBT debt was just building up and building up the whole month. So they were like thousands of dollars. They were building up a debt, but they, it was not. You can say it's not a very wise policy, but they were just in ecstasy giving out books. And then just on the last day of the marathon, they, every day they are opening, because they are living day to day, so they, every day they opened up the Pranami box. Whatever money was there, they spent it for Boga and this. The last day they found thousands of dollars. Some, they don't know who put it there, and it just, just exactly enough to pay off the BBT. So, Krishna will help if we try to do something wonderful for Krishna. Krishna will help us, that's for sure. We'll see Krishna's hand in everything. We'll see how he's wonderfully helping us. But that is not a matter for advertisement. If we advertise, then it's... Is it spiritual or is it material? If we advertise, then it's... That means that some mayic form has come to help us boost our prestige. Or, but if we generally want, genuinely want to serve Krishna, then we'll, we'll certainly we'll see Krishna in so many wonderful ways. Dhanu Maharaj, like to add anything to that? Yeah, about miracles. Um, I just read in uh, Druga Karma was telling about one Chinese person, and he was studied by the scientist there mm. because of his powers. Uh-huh. And so under very, 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 very strict scientific. Mm. They had to demonstrate his so called mystical powers or whatever it was, and they mm. found they were true. Yeah. And then one of the powers was that they took a, a glass case and they stuck an insect in it, mm-hmm. lied, and they sealed it. Mm-hmm. So that the whole thing was to get the insect out. So, the insect got out, suddenly the insect was outside alive, and then the glass case wasn't broken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So uh, they managed to actually film what happened. They got a camera, a special camera that goes 400 grams per second. Mm-hmm. Real time, normal 16. Is it like 400 frames per second? It's frames per second. So it's 400 frames per second. Special Japanese sleep on camera. <laughs> and so they filmed them. They gave them some object bottom or some plastic object and they sealed the tube, the glass tube. Mm. And then it came out without breaking the mm. glass case. And the thing was intact and it was outside of it. So on the film, they actually managed to film three frames out of three, four hundred. They could see the object happening in the glass and coming out. So in one hundred of a second, they managed to, the object we are breaking it. Yeah. There are so many things. I remember. I remember. You know, there, there's so much documentation of miracles. I remember seeing as a child also on TV. They they put a, a yogi in a in a case with in a vacuum. Then he came out after nine hours. He signaled, "I want to come out now." I remember on the beach. Or used to, in the this would be. In, late 1970s in Bombay on the Juhu beach just in front of the temple used to go walking Jabba walk and there'd be inside the sand there'd be two hands coming up like this someone was buried in the sand it was daily thing and people would walk past and put a few coins it's a funny way to earn a living but <laughs> so it'd be like this someone would be buried in the sand I don't know daily it'd be like that and there are so many things. the type of some I saw that on I saw that on TV also as a kid also, from Sri Lanka they showed the type of some walking on the fire. And this. There are so many things. Amazing things. There's a book on it, uh, up Kipling's, uh, believe it or not. A lot of things from this morning's day. What about this Houdini? He was... He had, he's a magician, but it works like Mystic Powder. How, how he was tied up in a box and chained up and thrown in, thrown in the Niagara Falls. And, Not by mystic power. Although it seems impossible how he could be manacled, put in a sealed box and thrown in just before the Niagara Falls. And come out. Came through, yeah. 
But still, they won't. Still, people won't believe. It's they, they, they're preconditioned. They're not scientific minded. Actually. I, I I never saw, but apparently there was someone who regu- on TV and in public performances regularly. Yeah, someone would hold a spoon like this, huh? He was also by the American military. They examined him, and just by looking at it, he made it bend. Hmm. <laughs> Prabhupada said in one lecture that uh, there are some yogis, they take bath every morning in, in Badrinath, Rameshwaram, Puri and Dwarka. No, 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 yogis, I'm saying. They take bath in the four dhams every morning. Prabhupada said, I have personally seen. So that suggests Prabhupada himself is also, if he's personally seen, then he must be going also. So many things. Ratha Khan, which Ratha Khan? Mm. So you do some time back in history, get a second degree born in the face. Mm. So he has the pocket jacket to print the rest of us. Uh, he was admitted to the hospital in China. Mm. Before the operation, this one is gone. <coughs> Mother, he just kept uh, saying, there's no yeast on this face. Mm-hmm. Don't be surprised. He will take all the yeast. So they ban firecrackers in my apartment. Still goes on though. No, everybody's hiding things to the pocket jacket. I've been in thousands. Next the problem, yeah. Hare Krishna. There are so many. There's one fakir in Rajasthan who went to see him. They have stones. He just puts his hand and they come out right in his hand. Anyone has kidney stone or any problem, just go. He'll take it out. No operation. <laughs> 